Welcome back, baseball fans, to the 70-73 Carryover League. We're continuing a series of looking at the uh, cards analysis. Uh, we got through eight teams last time. Just a reminder, um, there would have been 576 cards printed in this uh, first edition reissue set from Stratomatic. Um, this is what we're looking at as far as a roster sheet. And there would have been 570. Of course, I printed nameless cards by finding stats. And here are a sample of them right here. When I redrafted the league within itself, I had to come up with extra players to get to 640 so that the 32 baseball teams could each have 20 players. Uh, now, in, as far as the carryover league is, we don't use those nameless cards. That's not any fun. We want to use the cards that Str Stratomatic created. So they're pulled out. Remember, six cards are already on 32 teams from this set. That's 192 from 576. So you're looking at 350 to 400 cards in here. Plus you also have, uh, in these two bundles, you have hitters and pitchers who have not been in the league yet. So being stored in the card uh, binders are, of course, the cards under the situation of keep, waiver, or retire. And we did some analysis in the last of these videos of the America League East and the America League North. So let's keep finishing with the rest of the American League and uh, we'll try and make it like a 15 minute video is what I try to do with this series and see how far we get with that and look at uh, the what the future says. We've made some transactions. We aren't finished doing transactions um, as we get ready for the draft next year. The White Sox, let's pull all these out. White Sox, Kansas City, Milwaukee, Minnesota. Start with the White Sox. The White Sox have been a key player They've already made two uh, transactions. They started this round. I'm going to go take a peek at the uh, spreadsheet while I narrate this as to where they started in the uh, carousel. So they started with only two keepers and four guys who had to be retired, which is not very good. So there, to improve the lot and get four keepers, they had to move a combination of active players and some draft tokens. So what they've currently ended up with is the proper number of four keepers, two waivers, and two retires. And when we see the four keepers, we're happy to see that Dick Allen is going to be one of those. He was a big, high-profile transaction. Now what's interesting here is that we are looking at the 70 card for him, which was a Cardinal. So we've changed the history and said, you know what? Let's not have him keep traveling from the Phillies to the Cardinals to the Dodgers to the White Sox. Let's just make the one trade of the White Sox. And in doing so, the Phillies ended up getting Orlando Cepeda in the deal, which is a pretty good thing to get as Cepeda is every bit as good as Dick Allen as far as the power, and Cepeda is a much better first baseman defensively. And some other players were tossed into that deal. They also got a buddy Bradford from the Yankees, who, good defensive player, not much stick, but he'll have a better year one of the other seasons, 71, 72, or 73. Then of course, Carlos May and Bob Humphreys pretty much look the same as they did the year before. May, mostly by the cleanup as a corner outfield with not much defense. And Humphreys was forced into a closer role when he's really more, better suited to be, I guess, a setup guy. So when all is said and done, those are four pretty good keepers. And they had to give up a draft token or two and an active player to do so. But those are four pretty good keepers for the White Sox. And they have an option on the Dick Allen card. We know he's the MVP in 1972, but he's pretty good right here. So if you want to use this 70 card for a year, you can. And then move him up to the 72 card next year, you could do that. If you find you've got a lot of 72 players that you'd rather move up. So 
Like you say, you find a rookie or something. Then you have uh, Russ Snyder and Al Weiss are waivers for the White Sox. All right, the next team, the next case on the docket is the Kansas City Royals. And the Royals started at 5-2-1. And, and they're still there. They still have to make moves in the carousel. As a playoff team, they haven't made any moves yet. We saved those till the next installment of the video. So they currently have five keepers, and there they are, with a couple guys on waivers. And the five keepers are Pinella, Rooker. Let's see if they're still Royals, because I know both guys get traded eventually. Kirkpatrick, Pat Kelly, and Wally Bunker. Yeah, they're all Royals. So, sorry, Kansas City. you got to figure out who do you want to move from that five. You can't keep all five. Somebody has to move along. Probably not Pinelli. He's very good. I've sorted these under who I thought was the best and so forth, which leaves Wally Bunker. Actually, that's a pretty good Bunker card, really. At 420 and 222 innings isn't that good. This guy might be the guy you move on from. But there's still time, and that's what Kansas City will do in the next installment of Keeper, Waiver, Retire. The videos we post on Tuesdays. All right, next up, we got your Milwaukee Brewers, everybody's favorite team. Started at three keepers and three waivers. And currently, they have, are 4-2-2, two, and two, so they fixed the problem. They got a fourth keeper. Mincher, they got McMullen. Mincher, McMullen, Gellner, and Hovley. And they're going to waive Gene Braybender and Jerry May. Wow, these are nice keepers. Don Mincher, power hitter. 27 bombs. McMullen's third base. Defense is still two. Stick is starting to wane a little bit, but still good enough. Gellner is another good... He's not a reliever, a starter anymore, but he's good in relief. 421. And Hubley. The last two guys. Remember, you can only take two of the four keepers in any given year. But they'd be content with Mincher and McMullen. That's Milwaukee. All right, the Twins. This is a big offseason for the Minnesota Twins because they've come up empty in the last two postseasons and they're running out of time. As we know, 69 and 70 will be the last couple years where the Twins are dominant. In this timeline, uh, they started with the four keepers and four wave guys, and they simply moved the waiver guys for retired. So no, nothing big. What is big are the four keepers. And again, move, you got to keep what you have and keep it pushing it forward. They're going to push Killebrew forward. He was MVP in '69, I believe. And my goodness, 128 walks. What a monster year this is in '70. So pretty cool to get him back again, doing what Killebrew does. Tovar, again, center, can play the outfield. His defensive third isn't as good in it anymore, so you might just leave him in the outfield. He's still a 300 hitter. And then Reichert and Peronowski, wow. Now you got to make some decisions, because you only keep... Look at the Reichert card, too. Wow. Hmm. They might still have their phone ringing, because... You want all four of these cards in your league next year. I mean, the card. I get I get the player. But I don't think Paranowski will do any better than this. Or Reichert. Of course, Killebrew's not going anywhere. And Tovar. He's a twin. He's a twin. These two guys. He was an Oriole. And Paranowski. He was a twin. But obviously, you can't get these three guys on the twins. Unless you make a deal. So, the twins. That's a lot of talent. But it's all coming in that same year. Remember I said 1970. It's the last shot the Twins have. So they might want to move that bullpen around a little bit. if they Or move Tovar. Or figure something out. Let's go to the American League West. And then we'll probably wrap it after that. Alright, the Angels. The California Angels. They started with a bunch of keepers. 
They started with six, and they whittled it down to the four because they moved on from Ken Tatum, and they moved on from Mari Wills. So the four keepers are McLaughlin, Johnstone, Singer, and Heisel, and they're waving Phil Reagan and Sonny Jackson. So they were able to get some draft tokens for Mari Wills and Ken Tatum that they can use in the draft. And then they have to choose between two of these four guys. We talked that Heisel kind of goes into a slump until 1973. So the 73 car will most likely be taken. Singer, this is good stats, but of course we want him on the rotation on three days rest. So no to those two cards. But it looks like these two cards, McLaughlin and Jay Johnstone, will be the two additions to the Angels. Next up, the Oakland A's, trying to build themselves a dynasty. They goofed last year. They wasted a year by goofing off with a middling record, just a couple games over 500, wasting uh, an incredibly good Reggie Jackson card. But they've been active in the offseason. They have the proper ar array of uh, four keepers and the two waivers and retires. Uh, they're waving Jim French and Jim Nash. But your four keepers are Bando. They traded for Ken Holtzman, Dick Green, and Reggie Jackson. Holtzman was still a cub, but they made the transaction. They don't have to use this Holtzman. They could go to one of the future ones. But they made the transaction. They ended up sending Mike Torres, I believe, to the Cardinals, who he pitched for anyway. So it was a pretty cool transaction. Now, Bando, you got to lock up his best year. This may or may not be his best. Holtzman's pretty steady all throughout the four-year sample. Dick Green, you want to get a good defensive Dick Green if you can. Here's a two. And then Reggie, you don't want this one. This one's only okay. This is 1970. He really came down. 69, he had 47 home runs and a 270 average. Really came down. You want the 73, Reggie Jackson. One year is the American League MVP. All right. Seattle. Always interesting to see these teams who didn't exist in this particular timeline. See what they end up getting. So Seattle... They also, just like the White Sox, only had two keepers. And so they had to make some transactions. And they got their four keepers now. So let's take a look at them. The fourth keeper is Dick Woodson. So let's start, start it this way. Ulander played last year. Had a very similar card, like a 270, 280 card, good defense, good range, not many errors, left-handed batter, kind of a hit-and-run slap hitter kind of guy. And these uh, teams like good defense in the outfield. Similar uh, year that he just had, so they'll probably roll him back. Final year of Hoyt Wilhelm, 1970. Still good, not quite as good as he was in 69, but still good. Portland, this guy is bounced around like he did he bounced around in his MLB career, and he's bouncing around in the Carrier League career. He's played for California, Portland, and now, hopefully, Seattle. That's still a good card. 340. Matty Alou. They got him off the Pirates, giving the Pirates a token. The reason why the Pirates let Alou slip away is because they got too many guys, and they got to figure out what to do with the log jam at first base between Bob Robertson, Al Oliver, Willie Stargell. You get the idea. So the plan is to get rid of Al Lou and then move Al Oliver in the center field in the early 70s until uh, he loses his range and can't play center field anymore. So Al Lou will help Seattle. Nice card. It might not be this one. He might. He has one more. 297. That's a nice card. One homer and 700 plate appearances. There it is. Um, it could be a different Seattle card. And lastly, the Texas Rangers. And then we'll call it tonight for looking at cards. The Rangers. This is not a great time for them. They're still the Washington Senators, technically. But they started incredibly with seven keepers. All guys 
who were pretty good in the ni year of 1970, and they have to figure out, you can't keep seven, so they had to move a bunch of guys around. They ended up saying goodbye to Dick Bosman and Ken McMullen and Daryl Knowles. But that's okay, they still have a really good bullpen. And they're going to keep Howard, Stroud, Epstein, and Bill Hands. And they're waving Comer and McGinn. So, again, you only need, of the four, you only want to, you're only going to bring uh, the card, two of these guys back in this card set, and you have to go forward with the other ones. Definitely this Frank Howard. Pretty much the same year you had in 69. Slightly better average, a little bit fewer home runs, more walks. Monster year. Ridiculous year. Nice Ed Stroud card. That's a pretty nice card there. He's a three in center, ace dealer. Not no power, but he hit 266. He might even have a better card than this. Now Epstein goes forward into the 70s. So instead of letting him slip away to the Oakland A's, this is 70 Epstein with the uh, 20 homers, still with the Senators. They might uh, take his like 72 or 73 card so that Oakland doesn't get him. That would be a clever thing for the Rangers to do. And lastly, Bill Hands. Now they traded for him last year for his 69 card as a 20 game winner. They didn't want this to be a one year rental. So in 70, you see he's still a nice pitcher. He's not a 20 game winner anymore. And his ERA is up a little high, but he can pitch on three days rest. So you have to roll this back. You need to have an innings eater, an ace. And Hans does pretty well. Again, he's not as good as he was in 69, but you want a stability there. So it's, it's solid. And that's what you want for Texas. You've got four solid options of only two of these particular cards. So moving forward, I think it's probably going to be Howard, maybe Hans with Epstein and Stroud moving forward into 71 or 72 or 73. So. And that is half of the American League. So let's take a break there and we'll return to this series and move into the National League after more keep waiver retire transactions are done. Hope you're enjoying uh, these Tuesday, Thursday uh Roster updates for the 7073 Carryover League and the game of the week from the 77, 78, 79, 80 Fall League on Saturdays. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.